basketball is the best comedy you've never seen. How am I supposed to get a chick in that? No, don't worry, dude. You couldn't get a chick if you had a $100 bill hanging out of your zipper. Yeah, I could. Hey, I'm Ryan from 2G1. And usually with best comedy you've never seen, I basically give an entire synopsis of the film I'm reviewing, usually adding in my snarky or stupid commentary. Today, I'm not doing that because today I am tackling my favorite comedy of all time. Favorite. All time. It's a film that many people don't know, which is literally insane to me. And a lot of people have seen it and they're like, meh, which is dirt to me. The fact of the matter is, this movie is so amazing on so many levels. And today I'm not doing a synopsis of the film, but rather talking about stories, facts, and trivia about basketball that even the most ardent basketball fans may not know. Trey Parker and Matt Stone are the critically acclaimed, award-winning creators of South Park, The Book of Mormon, and Team America World Police. It's been stated many times that it was because of South Park that the duo were hired to star in basketball. This, however, was not the case, as the duo were brought on board just before South Park hit the airwaves in 1997. So, what about this movie? Was it a, just a great opportunity when it came up? It was before South Park came on the air. Yeah, yeah. So you just guys jumped on something that came along? Well, or? it was an opportunity to work with David Zucker, who, like, we both idolized our whole lives in doing, mm -hmm. you know, watching Airplane growing up and Kentucky Fried Movie and everything. So, I mean, that was the main reason. And I don't think anybody else could have called up and said, hey, come act in this movie, but it was David Zucker, and it was mm -hmm. like, this might be our one chance in our whole lives to do this, so... David called us up and said, you want to act in my movie? Because he wanted two unknowns to be in it. And this was before South Park had ever gotten started. This was like a year ago. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and we said, yes. Yeah. The genesis of basketball came long before there was a thought of a film. Director David Zucker had invented basketball in 1982 as a game that he and his neighbors could play in their driveways because they were bored with regular basketball. Combining baseball and basketball was a winning idea. A plethora of rules were devised on how to play basketball with baseball rules. And suddenly, the new sport became so popular that a small league was created. Other players in that league included writer-director Peter Farley, of Farley Brothers fame, and writer-director Jim Abrahams. Zucker and the league played from 1982 to 1992. By the end of the fifth season for the championship game, the game was so huge that the street the championship game was being held on had to be completely shut down. And two local LA TV stations even came to report on the event. Similar to what happened in the beginning of the basketball film. Though the league ended, the idea of basketball didn't die out. A TV game show was developed by Zucker and a pilot was shot with two teams going up against each other. Made up of contestants, actors like Scott Valentine and sports stars like football player Eric Dickerson. The host of the program, SNL star Chris Rock. There was also the thought of having guest comedians on each episode, hurling those legendary basketball psychouts at the contestants. Fat liposuction down to Marlon Brando's ass. Oh, it's all salty and warm. The pilot was not picked up. Zucker had a development deal with Universal Studios and had been hard at work on a biopic about Davy Crockett that never came to fruition. That script has just never quite come to where I was ready to do it, Zucker had said. Then basketball came up again. I don't know why. I just needed to do a movie because we had signed with Universal. So we pitched basketball and some other low budget ideas, but the script was pretty good. Robert Lokash and I came on and started rewriting. And then Matt and Trey came on and it was further rewritten until it became basketball. Trey Parker and Matt Stone had landed in Hollywood following their first film, Alfred Packer the Musical, later retitled Cannibal the Musical. By this time, the duo had also produced their short film called The Spirit of Christmas, a.k.a. Jesus vs. Frosty, the cartoon of what would become known as South Park. After moving to Hollywood, Matt and Trey developed a kid show called Time Warped, which was to be a historical satire television series, sort of a weekly version of Cannibal the Musical, but for Fox Kids. Actors from Cannibal also acted in the show, like Jason McHugh, 
Toddy Walters, and a familiar face to basketball fans, Dean Bacard. Two separate pilots of Time Warp were filmed, but the show was never produced. Two things happened during this time. The first was during this time frame when Trey and Matt were working on Time Warp and first met David Zucker, who was a fan of Cannibal. Zucker hired Trey and Matt to produce a 15-minute short film to show at a party for Universal Studios. That film, Your Studio and You, was a spoof of 1950s instructional videos, which features celebrities like Heavy D, Demi Moore, James Cameron, Steven Spielberg, and a subtitled Sylvester Stallone, which is pretty funny. Open to new talent and stuff. The other small project Trey and Matt worked on was a Christmas video for Fox exec Brian Graydon, who had been working with the duo on Time Warped. Graydon was a fan of the Jesus vs. Frosty cartoon and paid the duo to create a new version for a VHS Christmas tape he would send out to friends and family. This Christmas short was also called The Spirit of Christmas, a.k.a. Jesus vs. Santa, and looked much better than that original Spirit of Christmas cartoon and looks just like those early episodes of South Park. Trey would soon write and direct Orgasmo, which would star himself, Matt, and Dean. And this would lead to The Perfect Storm. Zucker had his script for basketball and had his sights set on one man to play Joe Cooper, SNL star Chris Farley. Trey and Matt are brilliant and funny, Zucker once said. On basketball, they completely filled the shoes of my first choice, Chris Farley. Farley had ultimately passed on the project. On the last day of shooting Orgasmo, Trey and Matt got a call from Comedy Central, who wanted six episodes of South Park ASAP. Graydon's VHS Christmas tape had gone viral in the Hollywood community, and the video was uploaded onto the internet during a time where it really wasn't possible for video to be uploaded onto the internet, creating one of the internet's first huge viral hits. Those six episodes of South Park had to be cranked out quickly, with the first episode scheduled to air just eight weeks after receiving the season order. At the same time, Trey's name was thrown into the basketball ring by a producer to Zucker who then approached Trey. At first, it was just to help on the basketball script. Out of the blue, Trey um, had a meeting with the Zuckers, with David Zucker, um, and he, he off like, and then he was like, Trey's like, they want help with the script they're doing, and then all of a sudden it's like, we're just funny in the room, and they offered us the leads in, in basketball. Let's go with the kids. And so we're like, <laughs> yeah, and so we're like, and it was like, well, you know, like, again, yeah, like going from like watching the OJ trial to like, uh, the Zuckers want us to do their next move. The Zuckers are like, you know, yeah, they're, people they're gods, the Zuckers, yeah. you know, and like for us, they're like complete gods and still are. Airplane, naked gun. Yeah. So we were like, hell yeah, we'll do that. Parker's thoughts were his silly paper cutout show would be canceled and agreed to come aboard basketball under that assumption. Parker and Stone are not credited as writers on basketball, but their contributions to the script were plenty and completely changed the tone. They initially told me they thought the script was funny but tame, Zucker said. Working with them, it has gotten a lot more rude. They are pretty much the reason the movie will be R-rated. A rewrite added Matt to the script, and the character, Doug Reamer, was born. Basketball was played with two-person teams, but a third player was also added to the script, so Dean could once again join his friends, playing Kenny Squeak Scolari hands down my favorite character in the film. The two were cast just days before South Park's first episode hit. And the rest is history. Hey, I'll come by. I like hospitals. No, you don't. You like Taco Bell. No, really. I went to this hospital one time in France. I got to go to this really hot chick. Dude, that was a hostel. Now go out there and make that shot! Yo, Gomez. Got milk? Up to 15,000! 15,000 volts! No! Where? No! I don't think I should be alone. I really need people to talk. It certainly does seem to be raining shit on Joe Cooper right now. I am too sexy for my shirt. Too sexy for my shirt. So sexy it hurts! Mr. Squeak? 
What? What grade are you in? In the river, baby! Get him out of Come on! Yo, Coop! Your mother's a terrible cook! <laughs> Listen to me, you little bitch! You either go out there and make that shot, or I'm gonna shove your head so far up your fucking ass, you have to wear yourself as a hat! And wow, lazy boy! Yeah, I made it myself, you know. If I had a nickel for every time this ball pulled me out of a tight spot, I'd have a shitload of nickels. Like a fresh pretzel? I baked it myself. Oh, man, it's late. We've got a game tonight. And you've got that big liver operation. And so... Hey, you want to do an interview with me? No. So enough... Are you kids with your loud music and your Dan Fogelberg, your Zima, hula hoops, and Pac-Man video games? Wow. The Lord must really have it in for that little boy. Your mother's deaf. My mother's dead, you little twerp. I guess that's why she didn't move around a lot. Derp. Oh, ah. Jesus. Ah. Derp. Derp is a meme known worldwide, and Know Your Meme defines it as expression associated with stupidity. The first known instance of derp? Basketball. Uttered by Matt Stone in one of the film's opening scenes. Ah. Oh, ah. Jesus. Ah. Ah. Derp. Funny enough, Derp was mentioned even before the film's release by Zucker when talking to a reporter about Basketball's trailers. We were just talking with Matt and Trey about how tough it is to sell movies. It's tough to put all these subtle gags in the trailer. We kind of call them Derp trailers. They're just Derp, 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 Derp. I had really only acted in little stuff that we had done. It was like, all of a sudden I had a trailer and I'm an actor. Yeah. Like, you know, and Trey, by the way, Trey is a really pretty good actor. For me, it was ridiculous. It was just ridiculous that I was in this situation. So the first, the first day of shooting and we got our friend Dean to be a little bitch in the movie. That was just our friend. We're like, we want Dean to be in it. And it was just, so there was a comfort level for me. So anyway, we got Dean to be our friend. So there was this good comfort level because I was just like, okay, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but Trey's there. Dean's there. Just like old times back in Colorado, I'll be okay. Squeak is hands down absolutely my favorite. And I never understood why he was just not cast in every single film. How could they be casting directors out there and directors who wouldn't love Dean in their films? It's hard to be in a film with Trey, Matt, Robert Vaughn, whose hundredth film actually was basketball, and be able to steal every single scene like Dean did. ...have the far superior team with the outside shooting of Coop and the deadly accuracy of Doug... I am not a piece of shit. Well, yeah, but you're a little bitch. Sure. God damn it, man. I swear you guys rip on me 13 or 14 more times. I'm out of here. Look at you guys. Fighting on the Mulaka Laka board. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Still nailing down that psycho. Oh... <laughs> Tough break, Squeak. Yeah, now you gotta fetch the ball, bitch. Just look at her. She's got the cutest little upturned nose, softest lips, sweetest Adam's apple. Wake up, bitch. You're my new best friend. Really? What? What? Are we going to the zoo? Oh. Yeah, we gotta say totally fucked up shit to make sure the other guy misses. Oh, right. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. Why is me going out with his sister totally fucked up? He's amazing. Simply amazing. But according to Glasgow Phillips' book, The Royal Nunsuch, or What Will I Do When I Grow Up, Dean's recognition from his roles in basketball and orgasmo came with a price. People would yell Chota Boy at him on the street, his character's name in orgasmo, and these surprise fan attacks unnerved him time and time again. Phillips wrote that Dean stole the show in these movies, and he is 1000% correct. But the book also states that Dean wasn't happy and talked on his future as an actor. Some wisdom from Dean that would ultimately prove correct. Phillips wrote, he didn't have a good agent and his new auditions weren't going that well. He did love acting. He even knew he was good at it. The last role I truly remember seeing Dean in was Galaxy Quest, though his part was basically cut from the finished film and reduced to a non-speaking role. If you're out there, Dean, just know that, for me, I see you in basketball four, five, six times a year. When I say that you should be in every Hollywood movie, I mean it. To me, you are truly a rock star. Ska band Real Big Fish is the house band for the Milwaukee Beers, the team that Trey, Matt, and Dean play for. Here's a factoid. 
The reason the characters play for Milwaukee is because it's David Zucker's hometown. Real Big Fish contributed two songs to the song soundtrack, the very fun song Beer and the cover of AHA's famous song Take On Me, which has since become one of the group's most famous songs. There's a video for Take On Me, but there's also an alternate version with the band doing all sorts of cool basketball-related activities. While I know it exists somewhere, the only version I have for the basketball version of the video comes from a VHS commercial for Basketball Soundtrack. Still, it's very cool to see Real Big Fish having a bunch of basketball fun. So they say to me and Al Michaels, guys, how would you like to be in a movie done by the Zucker Brothers? You know who's going to be in it? The South Park guys. Yasmin Bleeth. What could possibly go wrong? I don't know. Perhaps two men who wish basketball would just go away are famous sportscasters Al Michaels and Bob Costas. I find the duo hilarious in basketball, which makes me sad that after all these years, they still really don't embrace it, which is a shame, because I quote Costas's most famous line from the film constantly. Bob, in all my years of calling games, I don't think I've ever been this excited. You're excited? <laughs> Feel these nipples. Bob Costas was paid $50,000 for his role. And when Al Michaels arrived on set and learned he was only being paid $15,000, Michaels almost walked right off the set. Bob started out making three times more than I'd been on And then that, you renegotiated. On that movie. Well, you we, renegotiated that, on the spot, that was on the, the whole, set. That was a whole other story. We were all told, every announcer in the thing that we were using like 15, we're all going to make the same amount of money. But Costas was making three times more than anybody else. <laughs> Michaels renegotiated for $60,000, and the filming was started and completed all in one day. Unknown to most, Costas and Michaels donated their combined salary of $110,000 to charity. When the news broke that Costas and Michaels were reuniting to call a Giants-Mets MLB game a couple years ago, the internet was a buzz that the sportscaster team from basketball were reuniting. The two still talk about the film, right up until this very day. Al, you've got Do You Believe in Miracles? I've got the Blazers and the Jets. The audience can decide which was more significant. And we both have basketball. Just a few years ago, I discovered that basketball actually has an after credit scene. I had probably watched the film a hundred times up to that point, and I had never seen the film all the way up to those final seconds. The last scene that finishes off the film features Michaels and Costas. Dude. 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 NBA player Jeremy Lin once found himself at rock bottom in his basketball career. All right, so this one's just a typo, but I do see a world where basketball becomes a national sport and its first big player is Jeremy Lin. It was probably somewhere around the 10th time watching basketball, probably back around... 1999, when I noticed something strange and very funny. Not only does each basketball team have three players, but there's also an additional three players that sit on the bench. In the film, these three players who ride the bench never play. But here's the thing. These three actors ride the bench for every single team. It's the same three actors on each and every single one of the basketball teams. I always thought this was such a great in-joke, though I have read that original basketball players from Zucker's League do appear in the film. I don't know if these three guys are those original basketball guys, but you could catch them on every team bench several times throughout the movie. The Olympic Auditorium is a former sports venue in Los Angeles, where the scenes for the title match in Rocky were filmed, and also basketball. It's now a Korean American evangelical church named Glory Church of Jesus Christ. Basketball was up for awards. The only award I would personally ever want to win in Hollywood, the Razzie. For the 1998 Golden Raspberry Awards, both Yasmeen Bleeth and Jenny McCarthy were up for Razzies for their roles in basketball. Worst Actress and Worst Supporting Actress, respectively. Unfortunately, they both lost, which sucks, but at least Bleef lost the award to the Spice Girls. Sorry, I, uh, I still have a thing for Mel C.
Doing press for a film doesn't make or break the film. But for Trey and Matt, who are both riding high on the success of South Park and probably exhausted by that point, and already nominated for an Emmy Award for South Park, didn't seem to give a crap about doing press for basketball at all. Their bluntness and nonchalantness promoting the film is pretty hilarious in itself. Hey, uh, in 25 words or more, tell me, the, tell me how to play basketball. It's basically horse. You just have uh, first base, second base, third base, and home run, and they're all further away from the from the net. So if you sink a you know, home run is like a half court shot. And then you have runners, you know, so it really is a, a combination, but it's basically as boring as horse. You gotta drink beer while you're doing it or it's a total waste yeah, of if time. You're completely yeah, it's wasted, like I said, it's boring fun. to watch, but fun to play. And no, it's boring to play no, too. David Zucker's crazy, he's old yeah. and nuts. Yeah. <laughs> So is this part of this any fun? Is doing press for uh, a yeah, movie any this fun? This part I sucks. Oh. Sucks. <laughs> Horrible. Yeah. This is not. This yeah. is not why we did the movie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we did the movie for totally different reasons. And actually, when we talked to some friends who were, you know, in the business, and we were like, I think we're going to act in this movie for Universal. They're like, Wait, do you have to do a press junket? Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Right. While the film was a complete failure at the box office, it is beloved by those like me who think it's pure genius. And while Trey and Matt are still busy producing South Park, which just wrapped up its 23rd season, Matt Stone did, in 2009, talked about how fun it would be to do Basketball 2. All right, not an actual Basketball 2 film, but just putting together an epic trailer for Basketball 2. Trey and I have been talking about doing Basketball 2. And but not actually doing it. Or actually doing it. We've been talking about just putting a bunch of money together and just shooting a sweet trailer that looks like like a Michael Bay movie. And I the whole thing it. is it starts with a, it starts in an it starts in a like a casbah like in like uh you know Morocco or or some nondescript Arab country. And it's, ah, and there's all this stuff and there's a and then there's a uh, chickens and all this stuff moving through the main bazaar. But then you know you look under there. I think some movies started this way. You look under the blanket <laughs> and there's the, a nuclear there's yeah. a nuclear bomb, you know what I mean? And then it goes past and then you rack focus to me and I'm playing chess with like a little fake turban thing on or something like that, drinking tea, and all of a sudden it's like I start running down. You know, we just do this huge, huge intro to a massive movie, and then you just keep cutting to like, it's just it's just like uh, foreign intrigue, you know, times five, and, it's, and it has nothing to do with basketball at all, except for Dean's in it, Trey's in it, I'm in it, basketball, you know, <laughs> really, we just want to do the trailer and have it like pay for it to be in, in movie theaters. I love it. You've I, waited, I, you've waited 20 years and here it is. Finally. Well, you said you want it. If it was 20 years, you could do <laughs> like a weird, you know how they do like the anniversary, like two O <laughs> basketball two O or whatever they do with the, yeah. and you had the random shots of like people in a, in a, Spaceship for no reason. People in spaceship. What's going on in this movie? Dean crying. Trey hugging him with an explosion going off as he's hugging him and he's guarding him from an explosion. Like, what the, what the civil rights rally? Yeah, just what the hell is this? Personally, I await the day when Stan, Kyle, and Kenny form a basketball league where they have to face off in the finals against Cartman, Butters, and a ringer. Squeak. It's probably never going to happen, but one can hope. Thanks for watching. If you like this episode, please subscribe, hit that bell, and watch some of the other amazing episodes of Best Comedy You've Never Seen, including an episode on Zucker's film Brain Donors and basketball star Jenny McCarthy's Dirty Love. We'll be back with another Best Comedy You've Never Seen, but until then, this is Ryan from 2G1, and I'll catch you next movie. A little bit, be little, it's hard to resist The physical thrill of jumping on top of you For the kill seduction when you're in distress Pretty pink peach princess located underground Look, this isn't about the $18 ticket money anymore This is about being able to hold bad filmmakers responsible This is just like when we got our money back for basketball